Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Late Night Diversification Talks on Diversified Ventures. My name is Pascal Defoe, and as you already know, every Wednesday, uh, you know, I'm your host, and uh, we discuss about a uh, subject revolving around the main and crypto. Um, of course, I always like to remind everybody, as I said, my name is Pascal Defoe, and I'm not a financial advisor, nor am I an investment advisor. Um, so if you need advice or, you know, uh, around your investment or your finances, go to the nearest bank um, and then, you know, they're trained and uh, licensed to do so. Uh, if you want to play in this field, especially now that we are on the verge of the next bull run, you definitely want to make sure to only put in money you can afford to lose. Why am I saying this? Simply because there's so much scam out there. So much scam. And even with the bull run coming around the corner, you're going to see all kind of, you know, uh, old scam that they can, they're going to take, they're going to, you know, wipe off the dust and, uh, and then they're going to present it to you as the new big thing. And they're going to tell you how it's going to make you some ROI here and there. And many of you are going to fall for it. I guarantee many of you are going to fall for it and you're going to lose money. So that's why only invest with money you can afford to lose if you choose to play that game. Or you do your job the proper way. You take your time and do a proper due diligence and only join the ones that you are 100% um, uh, convinced that it has a chance of success. That's what I do. Now, I'm not advising to do the same thing. It's up to you. Whatever you do at the end of the day, you're using your hard-earned money, okay? Do not take any money you cannot afford to lose to put in anything because somebody promised you that it's going to 3x or 30x or 300x or 1,000x because of Bitcoin, all right? The reason I want to talk about the Limitless and Blockchain Sport project is to give you a little bit of that mindset of a venture capitalist. Because if you ask me what I do or who I am, I'll tell you, I am a venture capitalist in investing with little amount of money in projects, in technology projects that I see have a future, especially those that have never been done before. That's what I do. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. And usually, if a no name comes up with a great idea and a great project, when it doesn't work, we all call it a scam. And we call that guy a scammer. But if it comes from a guy like Elon Musk, forget it. We'll never call it a scam. It's Elon Musk after all, right? Let me tell you that Elon Musk actually went uh, bankrupt in several of his projects. We only know about the good stories. Right. But the stories of venture capitalists is one of a lot of failures, but the one or two that really make it through make them billionaires. All right. So be very uh, attentive. The next um, the next project that is also part of the ecosystem will completely blow your mind. Again, it is also something that has never been done before. Never, ever. It is brought to the community by Limitless, by Blockchain Sport. As I said at the beginning, Limitless never goes for something that has already been done. We go for things that have never been done before. Of course, when you try to do that, you also face challenges that have never been faced before. But that is part of being a venture capitalist. The VR XR, XR here stands for extended reality, creating a new hybrid category in sports, intercontinental game. It may or may not say much to you. Let's find out what it truly means. So before we even start, the project was evaluated just the intellectual property, because they're still at the testing phase at the very beginning of this part of the project, but it's just the intellectual property, the IP has been evaluated 
at 300 million. That is because of the potential it brings to the market. This, the, uh, the IP and the project have, has already been copyrighted. You can see the certificate of copyright and see in how many countries it is protected. So these kind of ideas have to be protected so as not to be copied by others and try to beat the market because they, you know, because they, uh, they have the money. It's protected now. And, and even if many of them would try to actually replicate it, they it takes the knowledge that they may not have yet. So blockchain sport, blockchain sport extended reality. So let me tell you about blockchain sport extended reality. Look at this picture very carefully. You will see that the five on the left-hand side of my screen look like regular people. The four on the left, on the right-hand side of my screen are wearing some kind of goggles. The one in the middle is holding some kind of funny blue ball. Blue or, you know, funny green usually is, you know, usually means that it's not real, it's digital. This is what this part of blockchain sport extended reality is bringing. It will create a complete new category of sports that has never existed. So be ready. Just imagine a sport, okay? Just imagine, and uh, one thing I, I failed to mention on this picture as well, look at the sky, look at the environment behind the... One side you have a sky, you have you know blue sky, and on the other side you have a different color sky. So basically these two teams are, the, the image is telling you the two teams are in two different continents, maybe two different countries on the same continent, but two different continents is also possible. They're wearing goggles that will allow them to actually play soccer or football, whatever you call it. And they play it with a virtual ball. They play it 11 v 11, or they can choose to modify the rules and play, let's say, 7 v 7. They play with a virtual ball. Of course, if they want to play with a virtual ball, they will be using wearables that can actually identify the virtual ball. This is a new format of sport. We've all been used to, you know, our children sitting on the couch, you know, uh, getting bigger and bigger because they don't move a lot because they're playing, uh, they're playing um, a, a, a computer games, right? Because they're playing video games. And now we, with blockchain sport, are bringing something totally new. These players play on the regular size field, football field. 11 v 11. The difference here is that the 11 from one side are in their country on their continent and the 11 from the other side are on their own continent. It could be Europe and Asia. It could be America and Europe. It could be America and Africa. So the keeper, the goalkeeper will also have very special gloves that will allow him to or her to catch the virtual ball. That means the gloves will be full of sensors and, and all kinds of things that will allow the keeper to catch the virtual ball. Can you imagine an intercontinental match between France on one side and Dubai on the other side? The players would be wearing VR goggles. It wasn't possible before, but for the last Almost two years, I haven't been to the gym. You know where I work out? With my uh, VR goggle from, uh, from, from, from Facebook, from Meta. We call them MetaQuest. And trust me, that thing works me out more than when I go to the gym. So these players will be in their own field and they will be playing against each other. That will minimize the amount of injuries that, you know, that can happen um, because, you know, there won't be any physical contact between the players. Imagine full immersion, format that allows players to feel like a real footballer with full immersion, collecting metrics with the help of equipment, conducting competition and championship, creation of world-class football clubs and teams, feeling the shot power and ball sensitivity. Many players go to training, they work hard, 
but they never make it, whether in football or in soccer or in baseball. Can you imagine with a category like this one now, those players that may have maybe have failed to play the 100% real life sport can now go into the category of, um, you know, XR, extended reality, because this is a brand new category that, that we are creating, that, that blockchain sport is creating. I, I'm a founder, so I can say we, right? So this is a brand new category in sport that we are creating because we're not just sitting on the back. And, and even those sitting on the couch and playing with a joystick are going to the Olympics if you didn't know that. So this one here will actually get people moving and playing, whether it's football, baseball, uh, hockey, tennis, you name it. Can you imagine the digital evolution of sports? These two people are on two different fields. Traditional football rules adapt over time, increasingly integrating digital elements. This will shift the aims to minimize dispute and enhance player safety because there won't be any physical contact. The beauty with digitalization is that you can customize players. If you choose to, to create a digital version of, let's say, Cristiano Ronaldo, you can actually create a digital version of the 30 years old Cristiano Ronaldo, you can then tweak and customize his shoot power, his dribbling skills, his stamina, his running speed. Imagine this, you can even have a team with the young play. You can have a team with the young Maradona. You can make a team, you know, that would be of those legends playing against your own team that you put together with VR. All that is possible thanks to the digitization. Before it wasn't possible because, you know, the chips and processors and, you know, uh, 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 electronic chips were too big. Now that everything is so, uh, you know, uh, uh, miniature, uh, 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 you know, can be uh, uh, manufactured as a very little uh, chip, they are getting into the ability to do all kinds of crazy things. At the moment, they already have the founders, they already have 32 teams that could be ready to go anytime and play a championship worldwide. So that what does that tell you? It tells you that there is a possibility to create a new league altogether, to create another FIFA, right? Uh, when it comes to football, to create regional leagues, to create, you know, you, you, you have the possibility. And again, this is something that only digitization would allow you to do. The players would be playing and we, the spectators, would be watching it, you know, a football match in a volcano, right? You would be able to increase, as I said, based on the type of equipment that you buy, you would be able to increase boosting of, uh, let's say, uh, shoot power of, of the player, uh, speed power, right? If you want some, you know, a player that is very fast, you could be able to to increase that, if you want to give your your your, your keeper, your goalkeeper, you know, uh, additional protection when it goes to catching the ball for whatever reason, you could do that because when it comes to digital, you actually could customize whatever you want. Now you may be wondering, but how would they know who is who? And but it's simple. Everything is so min, uh, you know, uh, so miniature that. Um, they can actually have a regular looking jersey and shorts and everything, but with what you see on the right of the screen, a very uh, a suit that has everything, chips and you name it, integrated into it. They would have all the wearables with all the sensors and everything that is needed in order to capture to capture the amount of data that they need, whether it's the suit whether it's the cleats, whether it's the shin pads, whether it's the goalkeeper glove, everything. They will be able to broadcast um, you know, this worldwide. Companies or channels like ESPN will be able to buy the rights because they will be able to sell it, right? And I, I don't even name all the marketing and all the ads and commercials that can, that, that can come to it. Now, imagine you being one of the founders and holding some shares that would be paid to you because you're one of the founders. Now let's look at the spectator view. 
we, we, we watch sports and sometimes we wish, we wish that we, we would be in a certain position to actually see how that goal went in or how this player kicked that ball. We never get that because we do not have the position. We're not in a position and even not, even the camera is not in a position where we could really see what we want to see. With something like this in the digital world, you pick your view. If you want to pick the view of the shooter, if you want to pick the view of the goalie, it's up to you. If you want to sit like, you know, watching on your phone, smartphone, you could be watching on your uh, on your TV, you could be watching on a VR, it's all up to you. So blockchain sport extended reality is an entire ecosystem for the following stakeholders. Football club. So this year would allow somebody to come up with money and buy an entire football club of uh, uh, um, blockchain sport XR club in a box, they call it. And then they will be able to participate in a championship that will be organized by Blockchain Sport XR. So turnkey solution for scouting agencies, looking for players, scouting fees, and anything, you name it. As I said, many players in sport, many athletes fail to achieve the dream simply because of an injury here or any other reason. With this year, they have a possibility to repurpose themselves into something new, right? Just like those actors that fail to make it to Hollywood and they end up dubbing voices on uh, animes. They still make a very decent living. You don't even know that sometimes it's them, but they are the voice behind many. They are, they are the voice behind, uh, you know, Mikey. They are the voice behind Donald Duck, right? So, this is what this here is going to create. They're going to start with continental confederation. Like for football, for example, in Africa, you have the uh, 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 ACF, like uh, African Continent of, of Football, African Football Confederation. You'll have professional leagues. You'll have football clubs. You'll even have school leagues, like, you know, school amateur leagues that can play the same thing because they'll have the ability to provide a system in a box that you can actually place in any playground and have one school play against another school from a different continent. All right. So experience football like never before. So computer vision, I'm not talking about it tonight. That will be the topic for another day. If this is of interest to you, um, four steps to join this project. You need to create a trending wallet using the app or the Chrome extension, transfer some TRC USDT, USDT TRC to your trending wallet uh, for the chosen package, ensure a minimum of 200 TRX for blockchain fees, and use the referral link of your sponsor in order to participate. So are you ready? The awards plan is designed to empower every community member offering unprecedented opportunities and awards for involvement and promotion of blockchain sport. So let me stop sharing. Okay, so this is the end of this uh, presentation about blockchain sport. And, you know, uh, I think the video that we have for blockchain sport is not really doing this project favor because it, it focuses more on uh, how much you need to pay if you want to be part of it. I think if people get to understand exactly what they are buying themselves into, they'll be able to come in at an even you know, uh, bigger pace, at an even bigger level, because this project is simply uh, one of a kind. Um, so to those, for those who know me, they know that Daisy is my, uh, my number one um, and um, has always been First time I've seen a project go start to finish and starting a new project. And that is what uh, Daisy, that is what Limitless is about. 